Hi everybody, Alex Deployer from Expert Forex and I hope this video gives you lots of money-making Forex trading ideas. Hi everybody, Alex Deployer from Expert Forex and in today's video I want to talk about the process of selecting the right currencies to trade. Often a trader is faced with fantastic setups in three currencies and they need to make a decision on which one to trade. Now in this video I'm going to give you some ideas of just some of the factors that advanced traders take into account when they have to make a decision on which currencies to trade. And it really boils down to how much value for money you're getting on a particular currency. So let's have a look at the first factor that comes into play. The first factor that more advanced forex traders take into account is the volatility is the volatility that they are buying with the spread. In other words, how much value are you getting which value represented by volatility in the spread that you're paying. Both are measured in pips. Now why is this important? Volatility is required to provide gains on trades. So the more a currency moves, the more chance you are of identifying trends and catching those trends. If the currency just dawdles up and down the whole time, your chances of success are very low. Now, in this example, we're using the ATR, the average true range of the currency. This basically says, what range does the currency normally trade in on a daily basis? So some currency would only trade 60 pips on a daily basis. Other currencies will trade 160 pips on a daily basis. And obviously, that the last one would be the most volatile, and the first one would be... The, the, the least volatile. So when you're trading, you want to get the most volatility you can, but you don't want to pay an excessive price. So the, the, and the price is represented by the spread. So here we have a table that shows the volatility as a ratio to the spread. So if we look at the, at the, at the top two currencies we've got very low volatility represented by the ATR and that ATR is most probably a 24 day ATR and the spreads are relatively high the, these spreads vary from broker to broker so you'd have to do this for your own broker to really get the true picture and it's basically saying you are getting 26 pips for every pip that you are paying the broker now if you go to the bottom here and we look at the pound yen and the euro yen down here and you you can see the increased volatility that they have and then you look at the spreads that you pay on these currencies it's a much better deal because you are getting 60 pips of volatility for every pip that you're paying so the pound yen and the euro yen are therefore a better deal as a forex trader to trade firstly they move a lot more and Secondly, they're less expensive because you're paying fewer pips. So you can see how the importance of this particular ratio. And this, and this is such a basic common sense ratio. But nobody really calculates it like the more advanced forex traders do. All right, so let's have a look at another ratio that's of interest. So the second ratio says, how much volatility am I buying in the cost of the pips? That I have to pay. So the previous ratio compared pips with pips. This one is now comparing pips with do dollars. So you are getting more value for your money if you are trading currencies with lots of volatility but that have a low price per pip. So for instance here we have two currencies with very low volatility but a very high price per pip and therefore the, the amount of volatility that you're buying per dollar that you're spending on the pip is only five bits of volatility. Whereas if you look down here, you look at the pound New Zealand, the pound CAD, you are getting 25 units of volatility for every dollar that, that you're paying in the pip value. So that's another way 
of looking at it. Now, what I haven't shown here is the next column, which is where you multiply the value and the, uh, the, the spread that is paid plus the value and then compare it with the ATR. But I first wanted to introduce these concepts to you so that you can understand some of the ways that you can use to select currencies and also what poor value some currencies have and what extraordinarily good value other currencies have. This tool that, that you see in this video is currently not, a, is, is not generally available, but you can see that it is very easy to construct this kind of information. The other thing is that this information literally changes from tick to tick, so it isn't all that consistent. Also, it also changes based on the market you are in and based on the liquidity of the currencies involved. So these readings can change throughout the day and you just need to be aware of that fact. So from me, Alex, I hope I've given you something to think about in terms of currency selection because in the grid trend multiplier, the ratio between the grid size and the cost that you're paying for that grid size is very, very important for success. So we are going to move into currency selection for grid trend multiplying. But unless you understand these basic concepts, you'll get lost in that process. Again, from me, Alex Deploy, Cheerio. Thanks for watching this video. If you've liked it, please give it a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe and click the bell. But most importantly, share this video. You can do this in many ways. Message your friends, send them emails, or share it on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, and those kind of places. So from me, Alex Aploy, cheerio.